family. <clears throat> I had to excuse me. I'm gonna have to do this one while I eat because I'm hungry as a motherfucker. But I want to do this quick Q and A. I'm gonna try to answer these questions um, in one video, not be so motherfucking long-winded. These are some excellent questions. Then by one of the sisters. I'm gonna wrap. Try to get on this right quick. Oh, I can show y'all what I'm eating though while I try to pour it up, which I should have already done. Y'all forgive me. I thought I had it up, but I'm uploading something as we speak. So, let me down. Camera go. Oh. Good old salad, you know what I'm saying? Got some mushrooms in there, some sprouts, some hearts of palm, some tomatoes, artichoke hearts, uh, cucumbers. It's fully loaded, you know what I'm talking about? Onion, red onion. Yeah, man, fully loaded, you feel me? Courtesy of the cab farmer's market. Pick that up. Embers brought me that while she was doing some shopping. So thank you, Embers. But anyway. Questions. First question was how to eat healthy while you're out of town on the road, or what would be a good way to travel as a raw foodist? Excellent question. Especially you coming through the South, you might have a hard time trying to find a health food store, or herb shop, or any of that shit. They here, but they so few and far between, that it's almost hard, impossible to find them sometimes. But, the best thing to do is to just pack your own shit. That's what you're gonna have to do. Depending on the length of your trip, that really depends on how much you can pack or if you can pack shit at all. Or if it's feasible to do that. If you're not gonna be gone long enough, then get your Google on and you'll find a health food store or vegan restaurant, hopefully. At least one where you're going. If you don't, then find the nearest grocery store that might carry organic produce. And if they don't got organic, then you already know what you're doing. You're just going to be spending your time in the grocery store. You're going to be able to find a grocery store somewhere. So you might just have to be buying regular produce and dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you can't get to organic. But yeah, a lot of times you just have to pack stuff. That's why it's real good to have a dehydrator. You can dry a lot of fruits, a lot of fruits and vegetables and take that shit with you. Dried fruits and nuts, not nuts. Dried fruits and vegetables last a lot longer. So that's good for traveling. And uh, yeah, that's basically the best thing you can do. You ain't gonna be able to find none online. Like, like I say, I, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find at least a restaurant or something. At least one restaurant or a um, health food store where you're going. So, you might just have to get your Google on and use these resources. Computer ain't all bad. It's good for something. But, that's what I recommend. Pack your own shit or do some searching. Next question. Exercise. Do you think exercise is just as important as eating healthy? Excellent question. Again, if so, to what degree? Second part of the question. I think exercise is equally as important. But not to the point where you are obsessed with exercise. Some niggas spend hours in the gym exercising a day. I ain't on that. I really think we need to get back into a lifestyle 
or we don't even have to exercise. But what we doing, our daily activities is work out enough. And we was working with the land again, being more in tune with nature, we would have to exercise less. You definitely wouldn't be going to the gym using all this external shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm into just basic, simple yoga, calisthenics, shit like that. Martial arts, even. Dance for the women. African dance, belly dance is African dance. Dancing. Not just for women, you know what I'm saying? Dance is good exercise for anybody, but certain dances are geared more for the women. That's how it was. The women would dance while the men beat the drum. So, looking to those things as martial, uh, as uh, exercise. Things that can also be beneficial to you. Martial arts teach discipline, keep you in shape, all at the same time. And you can apply that later. Self-defense, all this shit is wrapped up in one. So, I don't, I don't understand just going, working out, getting swole, just to be looking swole. Y'all niggas don't even be strong. Just big for nothing. Bunch of big motherfucking, I don't know, bags of hot air. But, <clears throat> yeah, exercise is very important, but not to be obsessed on it. So, like, we shouldn't be obsessed with what, what we eat. We should just be natural. Just do what's natural. All that extra super hard running and shit. I ain't with none of that. That shit fuck your knees up later on. Good brisk walking. Just get out and walk sometimes. It's great exercise. Basic stuff. Yeah. It's very important. Eating healthy is not enough. You're not going to maintain perfect health that way. You're going to have to be... You're going to have to get the blood flowing. It's like if you don't drive that car every day... What's happening? You got to go out there and crank it up. Sometimes. You know that. You know you can't just let that motherfucker sit forever. Eventually, you ain't going to be able to crank it. So, your body is the same way. You got to go every once in a while. Get your blood pumping good. And it's cool. There's a lot of shit you can do. Tai Chi. Highly recommend Tai Chi. Qigong. All of those ancient practices, the art sciences, excellent exercise, discipline, meditation, all the work into those sciences. So that's my answer on that. Uh, next one. Even better, the one of the best, last but not least, is a good is a good idea for female to fast while on her menstrual cycle. Absolutely. fucking lutely. I don't think there is a better time for a female to fast. I can't think of no better time. Like, that's just, as a scientist watching women and looking at some of the way, the way it should, is affecting women during that time, like, you're not supposed to be going through some of the shit y'all be going through. Some of these physical changes and these, this discomfort is not natural. You really, if you need your divine help, you should go through this process damn near without even noticing it. But I ain't gonna get into too much of that because that's a woman's topic as far as the science and all that. But what I will say is that I know for a fact that you shouldn't be adding toxins while your body is naturally trying to release them. You're working against yourself. That just don't make sense to me. Like that just seem like basic common sense your body is flushing and so you should be helping it flush whatever you putting in you should be putting in to aid in that detox process and that flushing process nothing you should be putting in should be uh, interfering with that and that's what I see when I see a lot of processed people a lot of women they consume a lot of garbage they have terrible cycles terrible times I know some women who end up damn near bedridden for weeks. Like, just for this natural thing that's supposed to happen. Like I say, it shouldn't give you this much problems. Like, if y'all want me to get into that topic, I can talk about it, you know? But I don't want to get into too much about that. But yes, all right, I noticed that as a scientist, that is an ideal time to, uh, to cleanse. And Queen of Four, 
backs that up. For anybody who wants a woman's opinion, which you should, that's who y'all should be getting your information from. Queen of Bulls say fast two days before your cycle and all throughout. So I say that week before or two weeks before, because your body give you warnings and signals. So you should be aware of when that's when it's coming. So that's your time to prepare. If you're not aware of your warnings and signals, then start to know yourself. And uh, you know, when you feel that, because start preparing for your fast and start your fast a few days before and continue it on until it's over. Right, water, juice, and tea. I think that's the best fast for that time. Just to help yourself flush and detox. Also, while I'm on the topic, some of the other good times to fast are um, during your birthday month, your birth right, Earth Day, on your Earth Day, and all during that month is an excellent time to fast while the universe is opened up to you. You and you alone, your specific time zone, your zero time reference, your own calendar and clock all started for you at that moment. And if you align yourself back up with that time, with your time, then you'll see things start to happen. You can predict things better in your life and, you know, yeah, that's another science. But we throw it off because we're following somebody else's time. So fast during that time, your time, it's your holy day. That's what Queen of Pooh said. So, um, yeah, birthrights. Seasonal changes, during the seasonal changes, during spring, like a week before spring, start getting ready, fasting, to prevent those diseases. You don't want to catch colds and all that. Something I need to be practicing more often. I don't, I'm not as sensitive to the season changes I should be, but that's an excellent time to be fasting. And um, just for clarity, and for peace and to open up pathways, Queen of Pua said, if you're having some blockages and some things not working right in your life, fast to purify so you can allow some things in. Fasting is for it's a sacrifice. And I'll probably do another video on fasting just to get into more depth, but that's part of the science too, to give something up, to sacrifice something so that you can receive something else. What are you willing to give? What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to give up your favorite food, your drink, your drug of choice, whatever it is, <clears throat> to receive something greater? So that's part of the discipline. Sacrifice something. So I hope that answers the questions. Is there any more? You know, I'm here at your service. And take care of yourselves. Be healthy. Peace.